Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for Allergy Research Group in our December webinar. We have an excellent topic spotlighting um, non-hormonal remedies for hormonal symptoms. And we have our presenter here, uh, Dr. William Nat Clearfield. Thank you, um, Dr. Clearfield, for showing up today and doing this presentation. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. We're excited to see what you have to offer today and the wonderful information. I do want to have people know a little bit about your background. Um, folks, I just want you to know that Dr. William Clearfield is a graduate of LaSalle College in the College of Osteopathic Medicine and Surgery in Des Moines, Iowa, completed a rotating internship, and served as an OBGYN resident at Metropolitan Hospital in Philadelphia, certified by the American Board of Family Medicine after completing a family practice resident in 1982 at United Health and Hospital Services in Kingston, Pennsylvania. Dr. Clearfield, since 1982, has been a lead figure in family and in integrative medicine. With graduate expertise in areas ranging from cardiac rehabilitation from the University of Wisconsin-La Crosse to medical acupuncture at UCLA 91 to age management and non-surgical aesthetic medicine, fellowship trained and diplomat status from the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Dr. Clifford's a leading authority on cutting edge medicine is a prolific and popular speaker, regularly addressing the age man management medical group, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, OMED, the American Osteopathic Association Scientific Convention, the Nevada Osteopathic Association, the American Osteopathic Society of Rheumatologic Disease, SVYASA University in Bangalore, India, and the second through eighth annual global webinars on traditional and alternative medicine. Dr. Clearfield is one of three Nevada representatives to the American Osteopathic Association's House of Delegates and is the executive director of both the American Osteopathic Society of Rheumatic Diseases and the American Osteopathic Society of Integrative Medicine. As well on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S., he hosts the weekly Discover the Future of Medicine, Integrative Medicine Educational Series. Thank you again, Dr. Clearfield, for showing up today and helping us understand a little bit more about those non-hormonal remedies for hormonal symptoms. Well, thank you. So, uh, so I like to say my my expertise is in hormonal optimization, and in just about every lecture that that we attend, somewhere at the end, the um, the speaker will say, "Well, you know, you can do this, that, and the other thing to try and raise or lower hormones, depending on what uh, on what the situation is, using uh, herbs, using uh, supplements, using uh, uh, dietary uh, um, uh, means." So it dawned on me that uh, it would might be helpful if we sort of aggregated that and put it, put it all together. And so um, this is a series that I that we that we do. And uh, today we'll probably cover six hormones. I'll I'll talk a little bit about what they do, what to look for on, on each one of them, and then some remedies um, to uh, raise them or lower them as necessary um, for um, for the conditions that we're looking at. Uh, we like to say that our, our practice, I've been doing a hormonal optimization for uh, probably about 22 years. I like to say that I've um, uh, made up just about every mistake that you can make. Um, this was a CME uh, a, a lecture, so there are no um, uh, brand names uh, noted here, as no solicitations or anything like that. Um, our agenda, we're, we'll talk about a little bit about the importance of optimization of hormones, and we'll probably get through the first six today. So we're going to talk about testosterone, estrogens, progesterone, growth hormone, thyroid, and insulin, if we have time. I'll talk a little bit about what each does and what you, what you need to look for. And uh, like I said, we, um, we really um, look at um, our, our patients through a, a um, hormone centric lens, and when we go through each one of the each one of them, what we'll do is we'll talk about symptoms, uh, wh what to look for, and and um, how to um, how, how sort of how to approach it. So we're going to start with testosterone. That's usually you know, that's that's usually the biggie, and I want everybody to sort of get it out of their head that testosterone only has to do with sex. Testosterone is. Um, is a universally an, an anti-aging um, uh, 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 formula, uh, uh, hormone. Um, it's an anabolic steroid. Um, it's in males, it's secreted in the, uh, in the testicles and in the female females in the ovaries and adrenal glands. And it's always a bit of a surprise that 
yes, females need a little bit of testosterone. And yes, males need a little bit of estrogen also. Testosterone is the principal male hormone, um, and it plays a key role in the development of reproductive tissues, of course, but also in muscle, bone strength, uh, body hair, and head hair. Um, again, like I said, it's in men, 95% of it is produced in the testicles. It's produced in the Leydig cells of the testicles. Sperm is produced in the Sertoli cells. In women, uh, it, it's produced in the fecal cells of the ovary, the uh, placenta, if you're pregnant, and the adrenal cortex. This is just a schematic of that. Um, and it just, it just uh, as we go through and we, we talk about the remedies, we're going to want to keep an eye on, um, you know, where, it, you know, what we're doing with each, um, with each one of these um, structures. <clears throat> so testosterone metabolism, um, testosterone will uh, 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 metabolize or break down into either um, dihydrotestosterone, which you see on the left, or estradiol, estrogen on the right. Um, it is um, stimulated to to turn into dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase, and it uh, is effective in, in the skin, liver, and prostate. It affects facial hair, body hair, prostate growth, acne, um, and the um, aromatase, uh, it converts testosterone to estrogen, and that affects the brain, uh, fat cells, liver, and testes, and it will um, be involved with bone resorption, um, raising good cholesterol, um, brain function, and breast proliferation. Um, testosterone is uh, useful for strength, energy, sense of well-being, muscle tone, urinary continence, um, sexual energy, sexual desire in both men and women. Um, and this is just pretty much a schematic of the same thing that I we, we talked about. Um, and uh, testosterone sufficiency, we'll see an increase in um, sexual performance, um, a, a sense of well-being, muscle tone, um, endurance, memory, cognition, skin turgor, uh, bone strength. It's anti-inflammatory. It, it relieves a, a joint pain, back pain, neck pain, elbow, uh, uh, knee pain. Um, it is, improves insulin sensitivity. And the reason we get more energy is because it will uh, re it will produce um, increased red blood cells, which increases oxygen uptake. An adequate amount of testosterone. And when we talk about adequate on, on, on lab levels, in our clinic, we look for, uh, for males, seven to 900 total, two to 4% free. Um, and in females, 30 to 40 uh, uh, total and again two to four percent in free testosterone that's the usable testosterone um, adequate testosterone will decrease anxiety depression um, ldl bad cholesterol fibromyalgia dry eye syndrome sarcopenia or uh, poor muscle tone uh, blood pressure uh, it will improve uh, the symptoms of multiple sclerosis um, uh, diffuse arthritis and mood swings um, and women, pretty much the same thing. Um, so um, those of you that are not uh, uh, practitioners or, or not comfortable uh, prescribing testosterone, and you have a patient who has low testosterone, um, the, the point of, of our uh, talk today is this, this is what we're going to uh, be able to do uh, without using testosterone and in, indeed without using um um, and any type of uh, prescriptive uh, uh, interventions at all. So number one is high intensity interval uh, 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 exercise. Um, high intensity interval training um, increases testosterone levels, it releases endorphins, and it improves mood and energy levels. And you'll get a su substantial increase in testosterone with sustained exercise for about two to four hours after the exercise. If you do it regularly, um, it will the testosterone levels will increase by about ten percent uh, with uh, from the baseline within about four to six weeks. Um, the the little numbers there are all the references that I use. Everything that we have here is referenced with peer reviewed references. Since we have so much material, I, I don't go into any any one in in uh, deep detail. But if you want more references, please let me know. A high protein, high uh, healthy fat diet. And yes, what the protein that you need for to increase testosterone, don't shoot the messenger, is animal protein. Um, lean proteins, eggs, um, chicken, uh, 
uh, uh, beef, salmon, tuna, it will increase testosterone production. Mono and polyunsaturated fats are found in foods like avocados, um, nuts, or olive oil, and fish can also help boost testosterone. Those of you who've been around long enough remember in the 80s and 90s when we told everybody not to eat fat. And, you know, we recommended olive oil or coconut oil, which is not on here, but that, that would work also. Uh, we would have, you know, been uh, you know, uh, ostracized by our, our colleagues. Um, stress reduction techniques, stress uh, elevates cortisol levels, which reduce testosterone. In fact, uh, cortisol uh, reduces every hormone. Um, and just to give you an idea, we 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 use um, we look at ten of them. There are thirty six in the body. Some of them we don't have the means uh, here to um, to uh, manipulate, and um, some of them are they're minor. They're they're like for scars, or you can even get, do a, a sort of a mini uh, Botox type uh, treatments with some some hormones also. So we're not talking about those. So we like to find out what our patients like to do to reduce stress. I mean, if we tell, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a big truck driver who's never doesn't know what Tai Chi is to go learn Tai Chi, we're not going to get anywhere. So we need to know, we sort of need to individualize this. But yoga, Tai Chi, meditation, reading, going for a walk, uh, you know, you know, for some, you know, it's um, uh, swimming. For some, it's uh, taking a, a cold, cold shower. Um, whatever it is, um, that, that whatever the stress reduction technique is for you or your patients, um, that's where the um, that we will get um, uh, an increase in testosterone. Vitamin D. Um, we're going to come back to vitamin D a lot, and we could do a whole um, a day on whole vitamin D. Vitamin D, an adequate amount, will increase free testosterone through its effect on the STAR enzyme, which is the enzyme that uh, stimulates cholesterol to uh, to uh, convert into pregnenolone, which is the first um, uh, part of the uh, equation that turns into the, that generates testosterone and estrogen in the liver. Um, vitamin D, um, it comes from sunlight. Um, and it is um, uh, universally known as um, uh, sort of the sunshine uh, 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 vitamin. It's really a pro hormone. It aids uh, growth hormone and cortisol in its in its in, in its um, in its work. Um, so we dose it at bedtime. Um, and our goal is 50 to 80 nanograms per milliliter. Where I live in Reno, Nevada, about this time of year, 25 to 30 is about usual. Um, uh, uh, in the winter time, in the summer, 30 to 40, if you're not using any supplements. Um, a good quality supplement, it, a th they come in thousand uh, unit uh, increments. A thousand units should increase your, your vitamin D level by about eight points. So um, if you get a, a, bit, the, a bottle at one of the big box stores, of, it's usually a 2000 unit um, uh, uh, vitamin D two times eight is 16. So let's say if you have a patient who shows up with a, a vitamin D level of 35 and we get tell them to take the 2000 unit um, uh, a pill from the big box store, there's a thousand pills in the, in the, in the, in the bottle. Um, two times eight is 16 plus 35 is 51. That'll get us to the bottom of our, um, our adequate level here. Normal, by the way, is 30 to 100. Um, but that's not going to work for us. I mean, those those ranges are too wide. And just for your information, if you, where those numbers come from, it's what's known as two standard deviations um, or 95.4% of whatever we're measuring. So it's kind of arbitrary. You really need an adequate vitamin D level for so many things. And you're going to this is going to come up again and again. Adequate sleep, of course. Um, and um, so poor sleep quality, uh, again, raises cortisol, stress hormone levels, which reduces testosterone. Now, some of the supplements that we like to use, uh, number one is boron, three milligrams per day. So testosterone, when it's, when it's produced, is bound to protein, 98% of it. That's how it travels in the bloodstream to the organs to get to to, to get to where it needs to go. When it's bound to protein, it's inert. It doesn't work. What we need to find is the ERT part, the part that does work, the 2% part. So we measure sex hormone binding globulin, and then I'm not going to get into the technicalities, but there's an equation that we use. And if the, uh, the free testosterone is low, um, then what we're going to use is boron. Boron will reduce 
um, the sex hormone binding globulin by about 50%. And it takes about only about four to six weeks. It works pretty quickly. So normal for men, a normal blood level in, in the lab will tell you is 10 to 57. And we'll see it frequently in the hundreds or 110. And there they could have an adequate te total testosterone, but it's bound to, to this to this these protein, this protein, and it, it's inert, it doesn't work. So boron three milligrams per day is that's our go-to. Magnesium at 10 milligrams per kilogram per day will increase um, a total testosterone. DHEA um, and pregnenolone alone are uh, precursor to hormones. They're the sort of the ingredients of testosterone and estrogen. Um, and they, it will elevate free testosterone and prevent a, de a decline um, during um, exercise. Ashwagandha is one of our favorites. It will increase luteinizing hormone, which increases testosterone, but you need to have an, enough uh, ashwagandha to do this. You need a minimum of 300 milligrams twice a day. And most of the supplements that, that are uh, on shelves um, don't have that much. So you're not gonna get the effect until you get a, a high enough dose. Um, ashwagandha boosts anabolic processes and increases vitality and muscle growth. It will it also increase TSH and improve thyroid function. Shilajit is another, um, is a so ashwagandha and shilajit are Ayurvedic herbs. Um, shilajit will increase uh, total testosterone and free testosterone and DHEA, and it helps maintain FSH and LH. Those are the precursor um, uh, hormones that are released from the uh, pituitary to that tells the, the uh, ovaries and the testes to produce testosterone. The cunapurins, five uh, grams per day, will improve total testosterone, LH, and neurotransmitters, brain chemicals. It will improve sperm count and motility. Um, it will reduce FSH and prolactin levels. Um, sperm count and motility were significantly recovered in infertile men with mecunapurins uh, 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 about five grams per day for approximately six months. Tangit Ali is, is popular in many, uh, many uh, supplements. Quite frankly, in my experience, I don't find it to work all that well. We, it usually comes with bundled with a number of other uh, 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 supplements, however, um, it can increase total testosterone and decrease sex hormone binding globulin. Myomin is a Chinese herb. It will raise testosterone and act as an aromatase inhibitor. You remember we showed you testosterone um, converting to um, uh, estrogen. The aromatase inhibitors will stop that. Um, uh, the most classic one is uh, arimidex or anastrozole, uh, which is actually uh, uh, prescribed for breast cancer. Uh, but we're, we're going to talk about um, the herbal one, herbal remedies for that when we get to estrogens in a little bit. Um, so myamin will raise testosterone levels. It will lower uh, uh, the estrogens. Um, there's three types of estrogen. Estrone, E-S-T-R-O-N-E, one. Um, that's the bad guy. That's the cancer uh, pathway. Um, and it will also lower estradiol. So uh, elevated testosterone levels in men. Um, it, it's become a little bit of a controversy here, but uh, we still, um, you know, want to keep it at a, at a, uh, a modest level, testosterone. Uh, high testosterone levels can cause gynecomastia, uh, breast uh, enlargement and tenderness, um, even masses. Um, it can cause um, uh, atherosclerosis if it's left unchecked for a long period of time, and then three to five years, um, if, if, uh, if estrogen levels are high, uh, you'll see um, higher incidence of atherosclerosis with, with the uh, estrogens. And it also, uh, myomin can lower PSA, so the prostate um, um, uh, 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 measure. Zinc sulfate, you're going to see zinc a lot also. Zinc is quite uh, potent in increasing uh, uh, or normalizing most, uh, most of the hormones we're going to talk about. It increases uh, testosterone by increasing, again, luteinizing hormone, which is the stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary, um, uh, and will increase it significantly. For testosterone, you need 250 milligrams a day. Most of the supplements come at 30 to 50 milligrams per day, and most of them come in either, either um, usually in zinc picolinate. So for testosterone, you need zinc sulfate. Pomegranate and pumpkins. Now, pomegranate juice, now it has to be the real thing. And it's not pomegranate juice uh, cocktail. You need the real thing. It can increase uh, testosterone levels pretty significantly within um, uh, within two to four weeks. 
Um, it also helps reduce blood pressure, cholesterol, and prostate size. And pumpkin seeds, about a quarter cup a day, will uh, it contains zinc, and then so we go back to zinc, and it will improve the immune system and prostate issues, and uh, and will improve low testosterone. Chrysin is another aromatase inhibitor, so it blocks the uh, uh, conversion of testosterone to um, estrogen. And so we kind of get a backup in the system. And what happens is we get an increase in testosterone because the, um, the conversion um, reaction is, is diminished. Shadavarde is another Ayurvedic herb, will increase testosterone. Um, it will, uh, this is more for fertility. It will improve sperm count, volume, and shape, and it will boost libido. And then maca and selenium. So maca will increase libido and improves erectile dysfunction um, without really a change in testosterone levels or um, estrogen levels, but it will improve uh, libido and um, uh, uh, the erectile dysfunction. And selenium is quite interesting. Selenium is one of the uh, key ingredients that, that's necessary for adequate thyroid function. When thyroid is functioning adequately or improved, the testosterone levels will go up and FSH levels will go down. It also normalizes uh, sperm motility. And we add in N-acetylcysteine, which um, is a precursor of glutathione, which is our um, you know, sort of our we just consider it our liver detox agent. Um, throughout the talk, I'm going to have these little charts. And the whole idea is that, and at the end, I have them all in one place. The whole idea is that you can print them out and put them by your uh, desk side. And you just, you know, if you need something to raise testosterone quickly and can't think of what it is, you can just look at the look at these charts and we even have the doses here for you. So these are all the remedies that I talked about. And here are the references for all of that, everything that we just talked about. So there's some dietary do's and don'ts. Animal-based protein, and I know a lot of people here are probably vegetarians or vegans, um, but it's animal-based protein, basically, that raises testosterone levels. So and don't shoot the, <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Uh, Plant-based proteins um, will actually will lower testosterone over a prolonged period of time. And so you need at least 20 grams uh, in, the, in those whey shakes um, and uh, uh, with no, uh, no sugar. You need a, a two to one ratio of carbohydrates to, um, uh, to protein. Um, and we like the cruciferous vegetables for this here. Um, so, so the greens, so broccoli, kale, cauliflower, bok choy, um, turnip greens, rutabaker, um, kohlrabi, um, they will... Um, uh, uh, lower uh, estrogen levels um, and um, will uh, sort of act as a negative feedback um, and um, uh, and uh, Im improve uh, your testosterone function. Fats, mono monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, and saturated fats will increase testosterone levels, and you want to aim for about a 25 to 30 percent um, of your calories from fats. Um, 18 to 20 calories per pound. Um, is is about right. Low calorie diets will lower testosterone. And then the superfoods, um, you know, the, the smoothies with um, the ingredients that you see here um, will also improve um, the, our testosterone levels. Don't, uh, and so just don't go overboard. Don't overeat, don't over protein, don't over fat, um, don't over carbohydrate and don't over um, alcohol. So those are the don'ts. Sometimes we want to lower testosterone. The most common uh, 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 time we would want to do this, um, aside if the patients have a tumor, uh, you know, an adenoma or a tumor, uh, which we don't see very often in the office, but usually for females, for uh, polycystic ovaries. Um, so polycystic ovaries is a, a officially um, a, a cluster of um, uh, uh, entities being anovulation or oligoovulation, so uh, no uh, menstrual cycle or very little menstrual cycle, high androgens, and cysts in the ovaries. And you need to have it, depending on who you read, anywhere from eight to 12 cysts in the ovaries for, um, uh, for it to be officially polycystic ovaries. But on a practical level, um, uh, patients have, have um, um, you need two of those three. Again, but on a practical level, if we have elevated testosterone levels, and what happens with elevated testosterone levels, you get that aromatase that I showed you earlier, we get elevated estrogen levels. And then what happens downstream from that is we end up with 
blood sugar abnormalities. So blood sugar abnormalities and high testosterone levels is, is known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. So they, they can have normal, normal ovaries and one or two cysts in the ovaries really don't count. So to decrease testosterone levels, um, again, practical things, you know, uh, uh, maintain a healthy weight, make sure you get an adequate amount of sleep, don't, not too much alcohol, not too much stress, um, a balanced diet, regular exercise, you know, pretty much uh, common sense things for there. Try to stay away from processed and uh, foods, high fat and trans fat foods, limit your caffeine intake and healthy fats. Again, avocados, nuts, fish oil, um, and avocado uh, or, and uh, coconut oil, which I don't have. So remedies here. Um, the first two are prescription. Um, I forgot to take them out for this, but so these first two are prescription. So metformin um, will uh, decrease LH, FSH, and total and free testosterone levels. Spironolactone is a diuretic, and it actually blocks the test side effects of testosterone without uh, really affecting the, the effects of testosterone that we want. So too much testosterone side effects are oily skin, oily hair, acne. Um, you can have pitted or you know, cystic acne, uh, skin breakouts, especially on the neck and shoulders, um, hair where you don't want it on the lip and the chin and usually low back. Um, and um, um, it, it, in an extreme, you can get a redness in the face, um, a swelling of the hands and feet and um, a peripheral neuropathy, uh, tingling and you know, nerve pain in the hands and, in the hands and feet. My number one, it's number three on here, but my number one remedy is spearmint tea. And spearmint tea, um, and you don't need, you don't need any fancy, you know, expensive teas for this. You can get it in any uh, supermarket, but you need to use enough. A hundred milligrams uh, in, in, in one cup of water. So how do you know how much is in a, in a, in a, uh, in a tea bag? So I'm going to mention a brand name here since we're not CME, I guess. But um, so so Lipton tea, which is you know pretty much universal. Two tea bags, a double bag. Each bag has 70 milligrams of, of spearmint in it. Two tea bags in one cup of water, and um, we can uh, we we will get a, a reduction of up to 23 percent in total and free testosterone within um, a, a 45 days. And we use this all the time. This is one of our favorite go tos. It absolutely, definitely works. A lot of the patients look at me like I'm, I, you know, I, you know, actually lost my mind to send them to the supermarket to go get some tea. But it absolutely, definitely works. Peppermint tea will also work. It's not quite as effective, but quite frankly, uh, spearmint tea every day does get to be a little bit old. Spearmint pills and things like that, we're not really had any success with. But spearmint tea absolutely, definitely works. Number two on our remedy list is resveratrol, but you need a lot of resveratrol. So most uh, most uh, remedies have uh, uh, 10 milligrams I've seen, 50 milligrams. Um, you need a thousand. So you're gonna need to use um, a high dose. You probably split it um, two or three times a day. But again, this will work. It actually works as an aromatase inhibitor and you will get a reduction of up to 23% uh, in testosterone and the precursor DHEA. Again, within about four to eight weeks, it doesn't take very long to lower the testosterone levels in, in, in these. Um, and again, we're talking mostly young females um, with polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, saw palmetto, um, which is we use, as you know, for males for uh, prostate um, enlargement. Um, at 450 to 500 milligrams is the dose for them. You need about half for females. So, and again, this acts as a, an aromatase inhibitor. It will block your the testosterone uh, of, um, uh, conversion to, um, to estrogen, and it will um, uh, help decrease uh, testosterone levels over a bit of time. It decreases the number of androgen and estrogen receptors. Um, it's, it's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Sorry, it's not a... a, a Got that wrong. It's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, not an aromatase inhibitor. It decreases the effect of DHT. So DHT, dihydrotestosterone, that's the testosterone that gives you the testosterone um, effects mostly. It's the super testosterone. So uh, hair growth, uh, prostate issues, um, and even secondary sexual characteristics is more, has more to do with dihydrotestosterone. Um, Chaseberry and black cohosh are in just about just about every supplement um, company has 
as a combination of, of these two together. Um, they act as opioids, they act as, uh, as uh, uh, neurotransmitters, uh, they're phytoestrogens, um, they help lower estrogen, they lower testosterone, they improve progesterone levels, and they also inhibit lack prolactin. Uh, black cohosh uh, mildly lowers testosterone via testicular release and raises estrogens, and it's usually, again, usually used with chaseberry. <clears throat> White peony is a um, Chinese herb that increases aromatase um, and DGL licorice. We use this, especially with patients with GERD, with heartburn. This will increase uh, luteinizing hormone and progesterone, and it will block uh, this enzyme here to lower testosterone levels by up to 26%. Omega-3 fatty acids will decrease luteinizing hormone and decrease testosterone a little bit, 6%, 6.8%. It will help regulate menses. And then N-acetylcysteine, we're gonna see this a lot also, increases LH, decreases testosterone when it's elevated in polycystic ovaries. Here are the references for, for um, lowering testosterone levels. Here's that graph or chart. Now, one of the, um, uh, what you see the, on, on the outside of it are um, behavioral issues um, that, that, that are um, dealt with with, um, all of these remedies. So, uh, so one of our interests is autism, and what we found is that a, a lot of the autistic children have super high testosterone levels, um, and it, it, there's a theory that that the testosterone levels in utero um, are are much uh, are, are elevated, and that's a it's a theory of how uh, autism develops. It's not a hundred percent, but it's it th there is something to it. So. Um, these remedies here that will lower testosterone will improve, as you can see here. So if you look at resveratrol over here, it will improve cognition, stereotypy, which is the flapping of fingers, um, anxiety, and social uh, socialization. So if you ever deal with um, autistic children, uh, you can come to this chart. You can look up um, you know, some of the behaviors that they have and find some. These are very benign remedies for it. Um, and um, uh, we have, um, we have a, a, a few... Um, uh, autistic children. Um, uh, my interest uh, started with this when uh, I had a friend who had an autistic son. He was 10 years old and um, he uh, was in the summertime here. Um, he seemed to have a lot of hair on his legs and um, he seemed a, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more mature than he should have been for his age. Um, so I asked, asked her if we could get a testosterone level and his 10 year old boy, his testosterone level was 672. I mean, that's, that's a 20 year old. Um, and so, um, uh, there was a clinic, um, in Maryland, uh, in the 2005 to 2009, that was, they were using, um, uh, puberty blockers for these kids. Um, the, the, F, the feds shut them down. Um, I, I would never feel comfortable doing that, but giving a kid resveratrol, a little bit of resveratrol, not, it's not a problem. Giving them a little bit of black cohosh or chaseberry, again, not a problem. Spearmint tea, um, and you'll find that the, the um, we're not going to cure them, but we're going to we're going to be able to sort of diffuse at least some of the some of that energy. Again, um, DGL licorice. Um, we use this for it very frequently for a uh, GERD or heartburn, and we'll use this in place of the PPIs, you know, Prilosex and whatnot. We don't see the side effects from that. And again, N-acetylcysteine and uh, omega three fatty acids. Um, this is this chart is is. Uh, um, sort of flipped around it's these are the these are the symptoms from the autistic kids and the, the remedies are on the outside so if you're interested in that um you know sure um we'll be able to make this available to you okay so that's testosterone um i don't know if anybody you want to have any questions now trinity or should i wait till the end yeah we can continue on and we'll get them at the end some are already being answered in the chat and in the q a okay so estrogen, estrogen has 400 functions. Um, we're not gonna list all of them here. The main ones are in, uh, in the sort of the blue. Um, it decreases blood pressure, it decreases bad cholesterol, it helps main, uh, maintain memory, it increases reasoning and new ideas. It acts as a natural calcium channel blocker, which is how it lowers blood pressure. It enhances energy, uh, improves mood, increases concentration, maintains bone density. It will increase good cholesterol by 10 to 15%. 
and it reduces the risk of heart heart uh, disease, especially after menopause, by 40 to 50 percent. It aids in the formation of brain chemicals, uh, neurotransmitters such as serotonin, which uh, is becomes depleted with um, depressive uh, 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 symptoms, irritability, anxiety, pain, and and uh, and and pain sensitivity. It helps uh, with sexual interest. It reduces uh, homocysteine, uh, which is a marker for um, cardiovascular disease. It it protects against macular degeneration and colon cancer. So it's pretty important. So estrogen elevators, there's lots of reasons not to use estrogen. And it, you know, it's a whole lecture and a half, uh, especially estrogens and, um, and cancers. Um, and that's for another day. Um, but the way to raise um, estrogen levels without using estrogen, um, soy and soybeans. Um, so your edamame over at your, black, at your Chinese restaurant, soy contains isoflavones that mimic estrogen. Again, black co you're going to find black cohosh and chaseberry um, uh, here. You're also going to find it when we try to lower um, estrogen levels. It's what's known as an adaptogenic herb. It will raise it when it's low. It will lower it when it's, when it's high. Um, red clover also contains isoflavones. It can improve menopausal symptoms by up to 50%. Uh, and it can significantly change estrog estradiol levels by 20 to 23%. Um, and we always look at the endometrial um, stripe, that the, the, how, how thick the endometrium is, and there's no change with red clover. Um, Don Kwai is a Chinese herb that has some estrogen-like activity. It will reduce FSH um, and, and will increase LH, which will increase estrogen. Flax seeds, remember we saw flax seeds for um, testosterone, uh, contains um, alpha-linoleic acid, and it shifts um, the um, uh, 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 2 hydroxy to, to 16 hydroxy estrone balance. Um, you get an increase in serum uh, levels, but a decrease in active estrogen balance. Magnesium, again, is another ad adaptogenic um, type of uh, uh, supplement. It will lower estrogen uh, le levels and increase um, uh, lower high estrogen levels and increase low estrogen levels. And again, vitamin D, uh, adequate vitamin D at the fifth, at 50 to 80 range uh, can stimulate aromatase production to increase uh, estrogen levels. Boron again, boron will also bind with estrogen, but it binds more tightly to testosterone. And it also binds favorably to the estrogen beta receptors. Um, so um, you will get a relative increase in estrogen when it, when it's um, com competing with testosterone. Again, boron lowers that sex hormone binding globulin. That's how that works. Evening primrose oil contains gamma linoleic laic acid and um, has phytoestrogens. And then there's broccoli extracts. Um, so cruciferous vegetables, um, cauli again, cauliflower, kale, broccoli, um, will uh, improve uh, estrogen levels. But with cruciferous vegetables, you need to be a little bit careful because they are uh, goiterogenic. So they will slow the thyroid. So we have a postmenopausal female um, who's having uh, uh, symptoms and has thyroid issues also. Uh, I don't have a good answer there. We sort of have to walk a fine line there. Uh, Diendolmethyl carbonyl dim um, will um, stimulate um, estrogen levels. Also, and sulforaphane, uh, which is a broccoli extract, will favorably shift that two to 16 hydroxy ratio. Maca, again, will reduce cortisol levels and act as an adaptogenic mediator of estrogen metabolism. And it will improve libido, sexual dysfunction, and especially if you're taking um, antidepressants. Um, here, are the, um, uh, here are the references here for those. Here are the remedies in our the little chart form that we have. So estrogen dominance, which is we live in an estrogen dominance type world, uh, unfortunately. Um, so estrogen dominance, um, estrogen causes cysts. Um, it, it causes cysts in the organs that it affects, especially in females. So breast cysts, breast tenderness, fibrocystic breast disease, breast cancer. Um, and the remedy, the, the medical doctor remedy, you can get it over the counter too, is a progesterone. You need to balance it out. Uh, that, that's, that's the key. Um, 
uh, in the uh, pelvis, in the in the uterus, it will cause uterine cyst, which we call fibroids. It will cause cysts on the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. We call that endometriosis, and then also ovarian cysts, and all it will cause spotting in between periods, um, and. Connected with all of that, too much estrogen are gallstones. So frequently we'll see, uh, we'll have a 40-year-old a, a female patient come in with a, a perimenopausal symptoms, um, agitated, irritable, can't sleep, poor libido, headaches, short-tempered, um, and she's had her gallbladder out um, 10 years before, and, um, and now you know she's um, having um, all of these symptoms. So they're all interrelated and including gallbladder. And uh, frequently when somebody will come in and I'll ask them these questions, and then I'll ask uh, the next question I'll ask is that if they had a mammogram and if they have, invariably I'll say, let me tell you what it says. It's going to say that you had dense breasts. Um, so that actually, um, you know, helps our credibility because it sounds like, so we know what we're talking about because it's all interrelated. It's not, you know, um, I go, you got a gallbladder, bad gallbladder, go to the uh, GI uh, doctor or the, the, the gallbladder surgeon. Um, you got a breast tender, you got breast cyst, go to the, go to the breast doctor. Um, you got a uterine fibroid, go to the gynecologist. They're, if you take a step back and look at it all, they're, like I said, again, they're all interrelated. And we're going to be able to relate the thyroid sort of indirectly in a little bit too. So our remedies here, again, you're going to see your chaseberry and uh, black cohosh um, and with the doses here, resveratrol, not quite as high a dose as we had for testosterone. Um, again, spearmint tea, um, a, 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 that double bag, deglycerinated licorice. Uh, with licorice, and I know it, it's more for the glycerinated, you need to be a little bit careful if somebody has high blood pressure. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids and acetylcysteine. Uh, again, zinc, mo notice this is a much lower dose than um, uh, we used for, it was 250 milligrams to raise testosterone. Again, flaxseed um, uh, nettle, and you can use quercetin, and frequently we'll get quercetin and nettle together. Um, they'll come together um, with, it's very good for allergies, and it will uh, improve estrogen dominance. Um, here's the chart for that. And then progesterone. So progesterone is the um, the balance is the um, is the uh, counter counterbalance to estrogen. Estrogen is uh, Ralph, if those of you remember Ralph Cramden. Uh, you know he was always uh, he was always getting himself in trouble. He was always you know he was always looking for a get rich quick scheme. Uh, he could also be um, any take any any one of your politicians and they go on uh, whatever uh, you know and they say crazy things. And then over here to Alice, that was his uh, long suffering wife. Alice is the one who smoothed things out. So it, the, the press secretary goes on and says, no, he didn't say that. She didn't say that. She didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. Um, it, it, would take, it was taken out of context. So progesterone is the, um, is the, is the soother of estrogen. And we never, ever, rule of thumb, we never, ever, ever prescribe estrogen without progesterone. I mean, that's a hard and fast rule. Um, and uh, there's, a you know, a, again, another myth that you don't use progesterone in, in females who have had a hysterectomy. Um, there's, you know, the, the progesterone has uh, over 100 functions, uh, many, many of them in, in, in cognitive functions and in the brain that have nothing to do with uh, maintaining uh, 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 uterine uh, lining for the, to, to be able to, to uh, uh, become fertile. It's dominant in the second half of the cycle and it cleans up estrogen's messes. Um, to raise uh, estrogen, um, we have some of these remedies here. One of my favorite is this one here. It's called Serenol. It's a, it's a, a, a pollen from Sweden. Um, it's a little bit expensive, uh, but it does work quite well. Um, bone broth quite works quite well. The foods, as you can see there, again, the cruciferous vegetables and healthy fats are, are uh, you know, are the categories there. Um, vitamin B6, again, chaseberry and black cohosh, um, and uh, zinc and green tea. Um, and again, how to boost testosterone levels, healthy fats, limit alcohol, um, exercise, sleep. You need to stay away from endocrine disruptors uh, um, that, um, you know, uh, fool the body into thinking um, that, um, that it, it's taken in or has adequate real hormone until it realizes it doesn't. And that's next thing you know, we have uh, autoimmune uh, issues going on. 
Symptoms uh, of uh, this would be agitation, irritability, sleep deprivation, poor libido, headaches, mood disorders. Um, and um, uh, some of the remedies here, make sure you wash your hands, um, avoid, try to avoid fragrances, uh, especially artificial ones, uh, vacuum and dust uh, frequently, minimize plastic and metal use, um, eat organic, um, and try to, you know, try to eat, uh, eat uh, whole foods, real foods, um, and look out for um, environmental friendly cosmetics and cleaning products. Um, remedies uh, uh, that, that are helpful, um, saffron, will decrease cortisol and increase progesterone. Um, it will you can get up to a 32% decrease in for de depressive symptoms. Vitamin B6, um, 200 to 800 milligrams, will decrease prolactin, estradiol, um, uh, and increases progesterone. We usually use the pyridoxal 5, and I forget what it is, it's P P5P uh, version of it. Um, I'm sure most of you want to hear know what that is. Again, chase berry re reduces prolactin and stimulates progesterone. Green tea extract, zinc. Again, you see it's even lower dose here for um, to uh, boost uh, progesterone. Again, the Swedish uh, flower pollen that we talked about. It has some royal jelly in it and also some chromium, so it will improve um, uh, 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 insulin uh, 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 balance. Arginine is a nitric oxide donor, will increase um, corpus luteum blood flow. Vitamin E and vitamin C um, it, in adequate doses for any, anywhere from four to eight weeks, um, will, you can get results that you see here. And again, bone broth. Um, so here's that um, chart here for um, the uh, progesterone deficiencies uh, with the doses. And here are the, re here are the um, references. The lower progesterone, usually uh, it's not, this is not an issue. Um, usually if you need the lower progesterone, it's we've been treating uh, someone with progesterone and um, and we've overshot the mark. So increase fiber, uh, exercise, stop smoking, adequate vitamin D levels, and uh, refer to balance it with the estrogen boosters. Um, and again, reduce stress. So um, usually lowering progesterone is not, not not uh not an issue there there are the references for that um okay the uh, growth hormone so growth hormone um uh, again has has a bad reputation uh between the athletes and the um and the politicians uh, they turn growth hormone which is really a, a terrific anti-aging substance into uh you know it, it's thought of as heroin in fact um, it's illegal in the United States to prescribe growth hormone for um, anti-aging purposes, which is really too bad. Um, growth hormone is 191 amino acids. And when I describe this to my patients, I, I, I liken it to Legos. So over on the right, you have a car. Over on the left, you have a, a windmill. And we say, let's say we buy a box of Legos and it's got that car on the right and it's got 191 pieces in it. If we put it all together, the way the um, instructions say, um, it will have the car that you see you know, on the cover. Growth hormone, by the way, stimulates um, growth and cell reproduction. So um, uh, if you, especially if you deal with uh, the young children, if you got a five or six year old, they're helping you with this. If you get it together, it, as soon as it's together, they're going to want to take it apart and do something else with it. Well, we can make another type of transportation with less pieces, with some of the same pieces, but the less pieces. And we can do the same thing with growth hormone. We can take growth hormone apart and uh, use pieces of the 191 um, uh, amino acids, uh, put those together. Uh, into different types of uh, substances. Some of them are FDA approved um, and they can mimic hormone, uh, growth hormone. Um, the difference is growth hormone comes in like the blob and shuts everything down. It'll shut down your, your, your production of growth hormone. It's extremely expensive now. It can be $1,100 a month. Um, and, um, and again, there, you know, legal issues. Um, so, so there's, there's some, some cons with it. The, um, the pros, I think, outweigh the cons. But um, so what we what we do is we'll use what are known as peptides, which is a whole nother story now because the FDA is trying to outlaw them now, or some of them anyway. So we can take the first 29 uh, peptides of the 191 
and put them into a solution. And uh, it actually was an FDA approved drug in, in 1990 or 91 called Semarellin. Um, but you can get most of these over the counter. Um, you don't you don't need a prescription for them. Um, there's a synthetic one that's a little bit uh, more potent, uh, less expensive, um, and and it's called a CJC 1295. And these come as injectable, so a sub Q injectable. So a little bit of uh, physiology on growth hormone. Growth hormone is released in spurts between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. That's why it's necessary to get a good night's sleep and at a regular time so that growth hormone uh, is uh, produced um, smoothly. It's stimulated uh, by the hypothalamus. It produces growth hormone releasing hormone and in the GI tract by ghrelin, which is um, in the stomach um, pathway, which releases growth hormone releasing peptide. It's inhibited by somatostatin and it's synthesized in the pituitary gland. Um, growth hormone sufficiency um, surprisingly is, is, or insufficiency is surprisingly common. Um, so adequate growth hormone uh, con uh, contributes to memory, concentration, uh, uh, obsessive compulsive tendencies, dark moods, paranoias, anxiety, um, sense of reality, what we know is what we call executive function. So in deficiencies, we have an inability to plan, dark moods, it can't switch between tasks. Uh, a loss of executive function is a um, growth hormone insufficiency. Um, lifestyle remedies, again, pretty much the same as everything. Make sure you get an adequate amount of sleep, high intensity exercise, limit sugar, um, intermittent fasting will increase growth hormone levels uh, up to 300% within three days and um, optimal protein um, consumption. Amino acids derived from the proteins, which are arginine, lysine, and ornithine can stimulate growth hormone production. Uh, the Mediterranean diet will also result in improvement in growth hormone. Here are the references for those. Natural enhancements of growth hormone, melatonin at 10 milligrams a day. Arginine, uh, creatine, and uh, ornithine will increase growth hormone levels uh, temporarily, anywhere from uh, uh, between 30 and 90 minutes. It will, they will increase by up to 200%. Creatine, which we use for um, you know, to uh, prevent muscle loss, um, will increase growth hormone levels by 83%, but it peaks in two hours, so that comes and goes. Um, uh, glycine, glutamine, L-dopamine, uh, vitamin D, um, all contribute to short-term increases in growth hormone. So if you need an energy spurt, um, this is the way to go. Ashwagandha is here again, again, 300 milligrams twice a day. Um, it will produce GABA, which is um, increased growth hormone by up to 200%. And so this is an institutional amino acid combo. Um, it's a brand name. Am I allowed to mention it at all? Is that okay? Yeah, um, it's not a CE, so go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so this is Cerevital. You've seen this on TV. <laughs> this is this is the formula for Cerevital. And it has been measured uh, up to eightfold increase in growth hormone within 30 to 60 minutes. So it does work. Um, again, for a short period of time, you'd have to use it four or five times a day to get, get a steady state. Secretagogues are homeopathic remedies, and I haven't gone too much into homeopathic remedies here. Um, so secretropin and dinotropin, um, it's made by University Compounding uh, Pharmacy in San Diego. Um, and these are sprays, and these will increase growth hormone levels by up to 25% within three months. Ibutamorin is a over-the-counter um, growth hormone a peptide um, that uh, is... Um, um, uh, uh, pretty fairly inexpensive. It, it will increase growth hormone levels by up to 10 to 15%. And then the injectable, uh, the CJC 1295, that's the first 29 of, uh, pr uh, uh, amino acids of the 191. The, it, and it when you see um, some of these peptides and they have these numbers here, it actually tells you where in the growth hormone um, cascade it is. So this is one to 29. So it's the first 29 and it should be a, it, it, the designation should be 0.5. So um, this has, has been altered. Um, like I said, this is a synthetic and this has been altered and it, it can be altered to the point where uh, we can change it from a six hour half-life to a six day half-life. So a once a week shot. So we we can get it in those in the in those terms also. Um, so here are your growth hormone boosters. 
um, with the doses here. Here are the references for that. Um, lower again, lowering growth hormone is usually, um, you know, if it's if the growth hormone levels are high, it's it's usually it's a it's a, a pituitary adenoma, um, unless you've overdosed yourself. So um, just um, you know, eat, do what you're not supposed to do. Eat junk food. Um, you know, eat, go go to McDonald's. Go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, eat a high carb carbohydrate diet. Um, those will um, lower your growth hormone levels. Um, thyroid, we have a little bit more time. We do the thyroid. You have time. Okay. So thyroid, um, you know, number one, it, the number one thing uh, that we can do without you, thyroid medication is diet. Um, and I like this quote, and you can you kind of use it universally. This came from uh, Mark Twain, you know, many moons ago. The only way to stay healthy is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not do. And that, pretty much, you know, that's what our patients you know, tell us. So, um, so 80% of our immune system resides in the gastrointestinal tract, particularly in the small intestine. And so um, uh, without a healthy GI tract, it's pretty impossible to have an adequate defense against disease. Um, and what happens is, is we get um, a, a weakening in the uh, small intestine wall. We get um, uh, toxins uh, get leached into the uh, bloodstream. Our, our body's immune system will react to it eventually and um, it will um, uh, cause, this is where we get the autoimmune issues. So it looks at our tissues as being uh, foreign. One of the most sensitive is the thyroid. Um, again, the standard American diet, you know, high fat, uh, high sugar um, diet, um, environmental toxins can be an issue, sleep deprivation, alcohol, um, chronic stress, and liver toxicity. Gluten, so if you go, if you can find a picture of a wheat field from 120 years ago, 150 years ago, and take a look at one now, you'll see that they're completely different. Gluten is a protein that's been developed. It's a combination of barley, rye, and a cross between wheat and a rye called uh, triticale. Um, it's easy to grow and it's inexpensive. And so our, our, our wheat's been taken over by these gluten um full um uh, you know uh, uh, molecules um gluten stresses the junctional walls in the small intestine allowing um uh, loosening and allowing toxins through microbes food particles uh creating the um the uh, autoimmune issues we we just uh, we just mentioned our body fights back by developing antibodies to its own tissues and it looks like it's look looks at our, our own um organs as foreign to us okay and the body misinterprets um, the, the tissue, particularly uh, thyroid tissue, as an invader, and it leads an autoimmune response. Um, and it most typically shows up as low thyroid or hypothyroidism. 98% of the time uh, when we have a thyroid issue, it's low thyroid. 100 years ago, uh, 95 to 90, 90 to 95% of thyroid issues was hereditary. Now it's probably about 75 to 80 percent is autoimmune it's it's you know, we've done it to ourselves it's it's the environment when the thyroid is running low and it's due to the immune system being um uh, uh off we call it Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh so in the U.S. it has a, a an exotic name uh because it was discovered by a Dr. Hashimoto in Japan in 1912 um in Japan, Hashimoto is not an exotic name. It's sort of like Smith and Jones here, but it sounds it sounds sort of exotic here. Um, if the thyroid's running high and it's from the immune system, it's called Graves' disease. It was discovered by a Dr. Gray, Robert Graves, in 1931. So this is just a schematic of um, you know all, all of the the uh, the bad guys that can get into uh, through the intestinal wall and get into the bloodstream. And the result is what we call the leaky gut. Um, so the small intestine is the site of the immune uh, function and it's under a constant attack um, and will create an outpouring of the immune defenses, um, specifically um, the adhesive called zonulin. It is a chemical that weakens and widens the attachments of the intestinal lining. And lastly, we get large particles that will travel through the intestinal lining and develop antibodies. Our body reacts to it um, by um, mounting its defense, and um, and we're off to the races with our autoimmune diseases. So remedy here, 
um, is, is the four R's. I've seen up to six R's, but you need to you need to get rid of the bad guys. So um, caffeine, alcohol, gluten. So white flour, white sugar, dairy. Those are the those are the bad guys. Um, if you're sensitive to something, of course, you know, that's that's something else that needs to be avoided. There are um, food sensitivity tests uh, that we use quite, quite frequently um, to identify which foods are, um, are you know, are uh, anathema to, to an individual person. You can do an elimination diet also. Um, eliminate um, you know, eggs for four weeks and then put them back in and, and, and sort of keep a diary of how, how you're feeling. That's sort of the poor man's way to do that. Um, the second R is to repair. So you're going to eat clean whole foods, nothing processed. You're going to increase omega-3 fatty acids. You're going to try some healing herbs. Um, and the ones you see over on the right there, um, um, aloe vera, turmeric, um, evening primrose oil, L-glutamine, um, and are the ones we like. DGL licorice is another one we like. Zinc carnosine is another one we like. Um, to restore... Uh, some of the uh, gut flora, we need to use um, fermented foods, increase, uh, and, and increase, um, increase in probiotics and prebiotics. Um, the fermented foods, as you see over there on the right, kefir, kimchi, kombucha, fermented vegetables, and a plain yogurt. And, um, and then we replace um, digestive enzymes and bile salts and uh, salt. We like pink Himalayan salt. And uh, uh, again, good quality uh, pharmaceutical grade digestive enzymes. Certain foods can slow the thyroid down. They're termed goiterogens. And um, they're, they're, again, I mentioned them earlier. These are the same foods that we tell uh, uh, menopausal patients to, to eat because it has, they, they're, they will improve their estrogen progesterone balance. So again, broccoli, kale, cauliflower, bok choy, um, radishes, rutabakers. And then over on the right, there are some that are not the cruciferous vegetables. The surprising ones are spinach, strawberries, and pears. So, um, you know, if you eat these things, are, you know, you're not going to die, but it will slow the thyroid down. So we have somebody who comes in and has a spinach salad every day for lunch. We say, well, maybe we could, if we could cut it down to maybe five times a week. Every little bit helps. Um, the consensus is that we, will, we want these cooked now. And the cooking of, of the steaming or, 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 or boiling uh, or even broiling of the, these um, entities um, will uh, will remove the goiterogenic um, uh, component of the of the um, whatever it is we're using. Um, some other things to use again: bone broth, broth helps restore the, the, the gut barrier. Fermented vegetables, shellfish, um, high in omega three fatty acids, um, and organ meats. Uh, micronutrients. So you need vitamin A, vitamin D. We mentioned selenium before and iodine. Glutathione promotes healthy function of T regulatory cells. And then niacin B6 in the form of B, uh, uh, P5P, vitamin C, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, and manganese. So, okay. Um, when we eliminate things, we eliminate one item at a time, uh, usually for anywhere from uh, uh, two to four weeks, then we re we we have it put them back in the patient's diet with have them keep a diary and see which foods they react to and which ones they don't. Nightshades are always an issue. So potatoes, uh, tomatoes, eggplant, and peppers. Black pepper seems to be okay. Um, and certain nuts, uh, patients can be sensitive to also. So again, you're going to need to do like a 30 day elimination diet to see which nuts uh, you're sensitive to. Of course, there are food sensitivity tests. Um, but the prices keep going up. My $180 test for 184 items, I think is up to $238 now. So it's not terrible, but it's not not nothing. Um, I just threw this in. This is a sort of a, uh, uh, a an oil protein mixture. It's sort of a snack, some, something you, you can show your patients or use yourself with cultured dairy. This is sort of a way to put together um, uh, a little um, snack uh, that's, um, you know, uh, healthy for the, for the GI system here. It was devised by uh, jo Johanna Budwick, who was the uh, the health, uh, the Minister of Health of West Germany in the early 50s. That's where that came from. How to raise th thyroid naturally. And here we are again with stress reduction will increase, uh, will positively impact uh, TSH. Gluten-free diet. This is, this is a must for any patient with thyroid disease. And I tell them, um, you know, this is, this is a Judge Judy deal. It's not, it's a, it's a yes or a no. 
either they're doing it or they're not not i did it a, i did it a lot i did it i did 95 percent. you have to go all the way and just it, what we try to do is um we try to get them the pledge to do it for four weeks and then go off of it and then when they see the difference um in their in their overall well-being um it usually becomes much easier um a combination of iodine and selenium. So iodine will in, is inversely related to TSH. That's your thyroid stimulating hormone. That's your detective. So, um, uh, so an adequate amount of iodine will get you an adequate amount of, of, of thyroid. Um, but too much iodine is no good. You'll, you'll get a, a suppression. So this dose that you see here, this is a... Um, this is a, a homeopathic dose. And most of the remedies that, that we deal with, um, that's what they have, the, the homeopathic dose of iodine. Selenium, we talked about before, it will raise thyroid levels, it will lower TSH. Remember, TSH is an inverse. Um, it lowers thyroid antibody counts by up to 26% within three months. Um, and it will um, also raise testosterone levels. Vitamin A at 25,000 units per day will downregulate uh, TSH um, the B and improve thyroid function. B complex, that all the Bs, when we talk about B complex, we want them methylated. Um, and it's common with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Vitamin D uh, here and here usually with with thyroid uh, unless if they're if they're sort of adequate we'll use the uh, once weekly fifty thousand um, uh, time released one it will decrease uh, TSH um, it will uh, also um, normalize the PTH and increase serum calcium zinc again a, a little bit different dose thirty to fifty milligrams. Um, and uh, can, this can be an etiology of, of, of a subclinical hypothyroidism. Um, if you see scaly patches and, and skin skin plaques, um, um, that once the thyroid is back to normal, uh, they usually have some sort of zinc deficiency. Ashwagandha, again, will decrease cortisol levels and increase uh, a T3, which is the, the usable portion of thyroid, by uh, 18% within four weeks and 40% within eight weeks. And it will um, decrease um, TSH. Um, we, again, remember that's an inverse. So the higher the number, the lower your thyroid is. So it will decrease your TSH or improve your thyroid function by 12.5% and 17.5% respectively in four and eight weeks. Roasted seaweed, uh, you know, is if you go to have sushi, it's the little green wrapper on the inside. Um, it will lower the breast can rate of breast cancer. Um, and uh, brown seaweeds have a tendency to create hyperthyroid symptoms. Tyrosine um, is a basic building block of T3 and T4. Um, it reduces um, uh, stress. Um, salted Brazil nuts. So two Brazil nuts per day has an adequate amount of selenium. as about that 200 micrograms of selenium. Um, I don't particularly like salted uh, 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 Brazil nuts, so I tend to say to stay away from it, but some people do. Um, baked fish, fresh eggs, and, and dairy here um, is an iodine source. So here's um, um, thyroid enhancers here. And um, there's your references for that. Um, how to lower the thyroid. So again, sugar-free, gluten-free diet, L-carnitine, two to four grams will inhibit uh, T3 and T4 entry into the thyroid cell nuclei. Um, it relieves uh, symptoms of hyperthyroidism, including uh, the, the characteristic hyperthyroid storm. And um, 600 milligrams uh, IM uh, on, in each uh, buttock during a thyroid storm will calm it, usually within less than an hour. Two remedies that we like over the counter um, I should get them on the same slide. So this one here, this is number one, bugleweed, uh, which usually comes as a, in, a, in a liquid form. It will lower thyroid levels, prolactin levels, and, and inhibit that thyroid uh, T3 to T4 to T3 conversion uh, uh, reaction. It will relieve the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Uh, B complex, and again, a methylated B complex, which is re inversely related to homocysteine levels. Um, will um, uh, lower thyroid levels, but bugleweed and um, lemon balm here, that's our two go-tos. So uh, lemon balm will 
uh, block the brain signals to the thyroid, increasing TSH insensitivity. It blocks attachment of thyroid antibodies to thyroid cells and it inhibits TSH stimulated cyclic AMP production. So let, we had a, I had a patient who was um, hypothyroid and she was, I don't, she came in, she said she was using lemon balm for some reason and her thyroid just crashed. Um, she was, you know, pre, pre uh, lemon balm. So um, you need to be a little bit careful. You know, these things are out on the shelf, but lemon balm and bugleweed as a combination works very well to um, adequately control hyperthyroidism. Again, selenium um, will normalize um, thyroid function. Lavender and sandalwood essential oils will help, can help relieve um, hyperthyroid uh, induced anxiety. Um, glucoman is a, um, a, uh, I think a carb blocker. And it's a synergistic with methimazole, which is a medication that lowers T3 and T4. Um, uh, rutin is an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant and will decrease T3, free T3 and T4. Here's the chart on that. Here's the references on that. Look, thyroid antibodies. So um, again, sugar-free, diet-free, um, uh, uh, gluten-free, sugar-free uh, diet. Um, Magicare, it comes from, is a plant sterilin. Um, it balances Th1 and Th2 cytokines. It reduces thyroid antibodies by up to 50% in a year. This is one of our favorite go-tos. Um, it's it's, it's anti-inflammatory, anti-neoplastic, it's antipyretic, and is, has immune modulating activity. It normalizes the DHEA cortisol ratio also. Magicare is one of our favorite go-tos. And anybody who has thyroid antibody issues, uh, this is our number one uh, remedy that we go to. And we tell these patients, our patients, because sometimes they'll go home with a list, of, a very long list of, of uh, remedies uh, for uh, all of the um, you know uh, m maladies that we look for. But we always tell them that if they, if they have thyroid antibodies or they have antibodies at all, this is the most important one. And if they can only do one thing, this is, this is it. Wobazyme N, um, uh, three caps twice a day is one of the part of the Wobazyme formula. It's an, it's an enzyme uh, formula. It aids in gut health and it will decrease thyroid antibodies, not quite as effectively as Magicare, but it will, it will do the job eventually. Selenium, again, uh, we talked about that and it can decrease TPO thyroid antibodies by 40% within 90 days. Um, and acetylcysteine is free radical uh, scavenger. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Um, it, it protects the liver. Uh, ashwagandha, again, in adequate doses, inhibits um, the inflammatory um, a cascade of NF-kappa NF -kappa beta. It acts as a prebiotic. It acts as a neuroprotective, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antidepressive agent. Vitamin B is inversely related to thyroid load, especially B12 and folic acid. Symptoms of B12 deficiency mirror hypothyroidism, um, but can include um, peripheral neuropathy, tingling in the hands and feet. And again, our old friend vitamin T shows up. Um, uh, so TPO and antithyroid levels, those are the uh, thyroid antibodies are inversely related uh, to uh, vitamin D levels. Um, zinc, again, 30 to 50 milligrams um, uh, will improve um, uh, thyroid levels. Um, zinc inhibits Th17 immune uh, conveying lymphocytes. Low zinc is an indicator of oxidative stress and increased inflammation. Um, iron, and you need adequate iron. Um, it, low iron will increase TSH, TPO, and uh, thyroid antiglobulin levels and decrease free T4. Curcumin. Uh, and magnesium, uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, antioxidant. Um, it, it curcumin can help detoxify heavy metals. Magnesium, um, severely low magnesium levels are associated with increased rate of um, thyroid antiglobulin, but not thyroid peroxidase. So a specific thyroid um, uh, anti and, um, uh, antibody. Um, Probiotics uh, will uh, we use the spore-based ones, and they will reduce thyroid antibodies. Here are those references, or the, the chart. Here are the references. Okay, and um, I think that's where we'll stop. 
So I hope that was um, useful. Oh, it's absolutely useful. What a wealth of information. Um, lots of intriguing questions here. I know folks that just due to time, we've mentioned uh, multiple ways to be able to reach uh, Dr. Clearfield. Um, but let's ask a couple today. Uh, we have a couple of people asking similar questions along with the uh, zinc and copper levels and how you feel about that with the testosterone. Um, everything in moderation. Okay. <laughs> and so the zinc, uh, let me see if I can remember it correctly. I think the zinc copper level needs to be about 15 to one. Uh, I think that I think that's the ratio, and then everything in every, again, everything in moderation. So, so not too much, not too little. We need it to be just right. Okay, I'm not I sure that's that was the question, or yeah, they're kind of looking into that zinc copper balance exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a uh, uterine polyps. Is this considered a hormonal imbalance? Um, you know, it can be. Um, sometimes it's it's just due to an irritation or um you know it, it is some some abnormal tissue um you really won't know that until um uh until you until you get either get a biopsy or or have it removed um but i mean if it bleeds every month and then, then it that's yeah then that's you know hormonal tissue so um again if 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 it's a, there's a polyp there and it doesn't bother you for the most part probably won't and just you know you know unless it's a in the way of something or 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 it's uh, you know irritating or annoying or painful or you know it can get erode and bleed um you know then then you can leave it alone for the folks that um are watching if you want perhaps maybe go to the last slide and that will have um Dr. Clearfield's information and letting you guys know he does have his own webinar that he also mm -hmm. has on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time so and a couple more questions um does choline cause inflammation in prostate does what? Does choline cause inflammation in prostate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and does it? What a... does it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll no, look it up. It's... If you have me back, I'll I'll, I'll get the answer for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate the transparency, of course. Um, have you? I can make something any... up, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you um, know about maybe the connection between estrogen mimicking compounds and autoimmune conditions? Yeah, well, there's that's that's you know those are your um, endocrine again your endocrine disruptors that we talked about those, and um, you know you're going to find you know anytime you get into you get into uh, plastics and you know, uh, metals and and you know environmental things. I mean, it's not good for the body. And um, you're going to get it, you, it for whatever reason. Um, our, our estrogens go crazy. Too much estrogen, as, as we've talked about, um, you know, you'll get all all of those symptoms that that we mentioned. So, um, yeah, some of it, you know, it's 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 almost impossible to 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 avoid. You know, you do the best you can. Um, mm -hmm. So, especially if we live in a city, right? Very true. Um, should the herb supplement that you mentioned that increased testosterone be avoided in women whose testosterone is too high? Yes. <laughs> yes. If your testosterones are high, we want, don't want you to be using the, the, the herbal remedies that will raise your testosterone. Yeah, that's common sense. Yeah. Do you find that too much flaxseed can increase SHBG? F A S. F H Sam Henry boy girl S H B G. It can raise it some, yes. So too much, too much. I, I I've not really run across. You know, I'm I'm taking three pounds of flaxseed a day, and my my uh, sex hormone binding globulin is too high. So, um, it can moderate it some. So, um, usually, um, it it's um, if it's um. It, the, the issue isn't that it's too low, it's too high. Thank you. Someone mentioned they heard that soy products like tofu actually bond to the estrogen receptor different from estrogen. So can soy actually be best by pants, uh, breast cancer patients? Well, you know, the, 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 the consensus out there in the, in the, in the world is that estrogens cause, um, uh, the the cancers. Um, we're seeing more and more evidence of it's the types of estrogens um, that are that that uh, are carcinogenic. 
And so if, if we're, we're uh, using, if we're stimulating natural estrogens, the answer is, is pretty much no. Okay, it's the synthetics that that where we ran into all the problems. Understandable. Well, I we do have um quite a bit of questions that can be answered directly from by Dr. Clearfield himself. And again, folks, he does have an excellent webinar on his own every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on his channel. We're gonna put up his information here for you. And again, he you mentioned folks that you wanted to see some of the slides. We do have the recording available. Um, at allergyresearchgroup.com at the practitioner portal. So if you guys have those questions you want to reach out to him, um, that is going to be available to you. And we'll put that information up for you right now. How you guys go? So we have drbill9 at gmail.com. Um, again, uh, Dr. Clearfield, fantastic, excellent, uh, so much information. Um, I can't wait to watch this again. And hopefully get to have you back so that we can uh, hear some of the rest, including the insulin and the adrenals. Okay, um, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And we look forward for you guys seeing you on our next webinar. It's going to be January 17th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.